Buffalo Calf Road's extraordinary expertise with firearms is both a mystery and a legend. And the Battle of the Rosebud is where that legend began. June 17, 1876, was a day that would go down in history. General Crook and his troops were on the march toward the Cheyenne village, intent on driving the Cheyenne people from their land once and for all. The air was thick with tension, as the Cheyenne warriors knew they had to prepare for the inevitable showdown or be annihilated. For years, the Cheyenne people, who once lived in harmony with the earth, found themselves relentlessly hunted by the U.S. Army, eager to seize their land and impose a new order upon the native people. That is why, on this day, undeterred by objections, Buffalo Calf Road chose to stand beside the men in battle. The fighting was brutal. Buffalo Calf Road fought with remarkable valor and determination as the conflict raged on. In a pivotal moment, she spotted her brother comes in sight, cornered in a ravine with soldiers closing in. Unfazed by the danger, she courageously charged into the fray, dodging bullets as she swooped down to save her brother. She managed to pull him onto her horse and escape the perilous situation, astonishing the other warriors and inspiring them to victory. In honor of her bravery, her people named the battle the battle where the girl saved her brother and bestowed upon her the title of brave woman. Only a week later, Buffalo Calf Road once again joined Cheyenne Lakota and other tribes in the Battle of the Little Bighorn against General George Armstrong Custer. During the intense combat, she rescued a young warrior who had lost his horse. Following their hard-won victory, the tribes regrouped before eventually parting ways. The Cheyenne people, battered but unbroken, did their best to return to their old way of life hoping the threat of U.S. invasion was now nothing more than a chilling memory. However, their peace was short-lived. Five months later, the Cheyenne village was subjected to a brutal surprise attack by soldiers in the early morning hours. The assault left over 40 Cheyenne dead, many injured, and their village reduced to ashes. With no choice but to flee, Buffalo Calf Road and her people faced a freezing, blinding snowstorm without adequate clothing, blankets, or food. The first night of their escape proved deadly, claiming the lives of 11 infants in the frigid cold. Due to the relentless pursuit from the army, most of the Cheyenne gradually surrendered. Yet, Buffalo Calf Road, even while pregnant, refused to submit. She held out with a small band of about 30 steadfast Cheyenne, including some children. Amidst extreme adversity and hardship, she gave birth to her second child. The small group finally surrendered due to deteriorating conditions and the Army's promises of land, only to be deceived and forcibly relocated to what is now Oklahoma. The inhospitable new land, rife with unfamiliar diseases and an oppressive climate, proved unbearable. Buffalo Calf Road and her family joined a group of about 300 Cheyenne who decided to embark on a daring journey back to their homeland. Evading capture, they set out on foot under the cover of night, initiating a grueling 1,500-mile trek. With the army in hot pursuit, they managed to persevere despite numerous clashes with soldiers. Throughout the arduous journey, Buffalo Calf Road fought heroically to protect her people. Upon reaching the north, the group found itself divided over a disagreement on how to proceed. One faction, led by Dull Knife, sought refuge with the Lakota, but was tragically captured and imprisoned at Fort Robinson. After a desperate attempt to break free, they were massacred by soldiers, 
resulting in the deaths of over 65 Cheyenne men, women, and children. The other group, under the leadership of Chief Little Wolf and including Buffalo Calf Road, managed to find temporary refuge in the sand hills of Nebraska. In the meantime, her husband, plagued by a descent into madness, killed Black Crane in a dispute leading to his banishment. Buffalo Calf Road, her children, and a few relatives chose to follow him. Sadly, both groups were eventually captured by the army and imprisoned at Fort Coe. Buffalo Calf Road and the Cheyenne people had long yearned for something far more precious than money or gold, a place to call home. In 1884, after enduring countless hardships and heartaches, the Cheyennes at last found sanctuary in southeastern Montana, an area now known as the Lame Deer Reservation. It was a bittersweet triumph, a testament to their resilience. Tragically, Buffalo Calf Road would not live to see Lame Deer Reservation. In the cold confines of her prison cell, she succumbed to the merciless grip of diphtheria in May 1879 at just 35 years old. Her untimely passing serves as a poignant reminder of the sacrifices made by countless individuals like her in the quest for a home and the indomitable strength of the human spirit.